Hey! Hello and welcome to this really spooky tutorial by promotions. Because today we are going to, to hunt some ghosts. So just follow me to other thing! Are you scared? Well, maybe you should because this tutorial is packed with really a lot of stuff. So, I mean, really a lot. So today, if you do not learn anything new, a new workflow, an effect or even a new software, you will get all the money back that you spent for this tutorial. Promised. So, the good news. I will make this tutorial super easy and step by step. Because creating such an effect involves many, many different steps. Yes, the final result will be a ghost that is appearing and disappearing, but indeed you will learn a lot more. So, how to shoot this and how to set this up to make it look convincing? Yes, as a bonus we will even take a look at a free particle software called Particle Illusion. Ready? Uh, you want to subscribe first? Well, okay. I'll give you a few seconds to do so. So, here is some behind the scenes footage of the actual shooting. Of course, I filmed myself with my very best acting skills. So, whenever you are planning on shooting the next Blair Witch, call me. <coughs> next, as always, is a clean plate. I filmed a special version of the clean plate. I filmed it as a light layer. So, wherever I knew that there will be a ghost, I put up a light, because maybe you have noticed, whenever a ghost appears, he lightens up his surrounding. And I used an LED panel for that, but you could also do this with your smartphone. And then I used the same light and recorded some scary scenes of my face, as I knew I wanted to use that later on. And if you want to do that too, but you don't have a forest nearby, or you are afraid of going out at night, you could also simply darken your bedroom and hang black curtains on the wall. But who would use his bedroom as a film set? Also, in early tests I found that you don't need a fully animated ghost. It would be enough if some parts are moving to sell the trick. And so I also filmed my hands doing some spooky stuff. Again, with the same light setup. And now let's bring all of this into After Effects. As background I use a black solid, as I want to use the add blending mode later on. So let's start with the face. And I'm just skipping through this to find a really ugly one. <laughs> Perfect! So to make it look even more horrifying I want to morph it a little bit. And this is a really cool tool that can do so so much. It is called reshape. So once applied you can choose Two masks. Well, actually three, but let's skip the third for now. I create the first mask around my normal head shape and the second mask is the shape it will transform to, the destination mask. Now, simply transition between the two masks from 0 to 100. Head is done. Hmm. So, let's directly add some hands. Simply mask a sloppy rotor around them, blending mode again to add and we are getting somewhere. Next, let's add a skeleton or skull or both. For this I used Envato elements as they really have millions of assets for that and the best about those is that they also have 3D assets so I can choose the exact angle I need which is just perfect. And did I mention that you get 50% off Envato if you use my link in the video description? And they also have stuff like After Effects templates, pre-keyed monsters or videos and images and Another option would be to already use a skull mask while filming. But who has something like that at home? Or mm, you simply take a picture of a skull. Um, well, but who has a real skull at home? Um, okay. But you could still use uh, some Lego and simply build your own skull. Okay. I have this skeleton footage and this skull and can now again mask out parts and add them wherever I think they fit best.
blending mode to add and with a levels effect we can now define how the blending affects the image. And you can also tint this to find a perfect look. But you could also do that at the end and simply tint the whole composition. In that way you can work faster as you only apply the effect once and not one time per layer. And you can really get creative here and add as much stuff as you want. And once done, let's create two additional assets out of this. Therefore, I am going to render this out so we can work a bit more efficient. At first I want to create some kind of electricity around the ghost and a perfect way to do this is to use the Vegas effect. When you apply it, it directly detects the image contours and you can play with how many segments you want to have as well as the color or width of your stroke. And don't forget to set it to transparent so we only see those lines and if we add a turbulent displace effect after that and tweak the amount and choose a small size and quickly set keyframes to the evolution, we now get some energy strokes around the edges of our ghost. And if you repeat that step again with slightly different values, we are on our way to success. Perfect. Hey, and as a second asset I want to create like god rays or some kind of shine around the ghost. And this one I can create with a radial fast blur. Simply set to brightest and with the amount I can set the length of the rays. And don't forget to set your center point. But for me this looks a bit too clean now, almost like an angel. So I want to break up the rays and maybe they should shimmer and so on. Hey, but wait, we already have an asset that does exactly that. The electricity asset, perfect. So I simply switch out the ghost with that. And I can do that by holding down Alt while drag and dropping. Whew. Now let's bring all of this together. At first I look for a timing when the ghost should appear and set two markers. Here we should not see him, so 0% opacity and here it should be fully visible. So let's bring in all of our assets so far and hey, we are smart. We do not keyframe all of this, nope. Instead we create an adjustment layer and add the slider effect to this. And let's call our layer opacity so we have everything organized. And now we can keyframe the slider from 0 to 100 and connect the layers to the slider. Let's go to one of the layers, hit T for opacity, hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch. With the pick whip we can now connect the two values and hey, we do that with all the other layers too. Now we can control our animation with just one slider. Great! And we can also bring in the light reference layer, bring it on top of the footage but behind the ghost asset and I quickly mask out the glowing part and also connect it to the slider. Now we can turn on and off the light as well. And you can play with the blending modes here, but it works pretty fine. And this looks pretty nice so far. Now let's concentrate on the ghost reveal as well as the vanishing effect. For the reveal I use an energy burst. And there are really a few ways to do that. And guess what? I will show you all of them. But let's just make a rundown of the effect because this could get pretty advanced. And Hey, leave me a comment down below if you want to learn one of those effects and tools in more detail. So the first method is the easiest. Go to Action VFX and search for a fitting asset and purchase it. And when you do so, you can use the link in the video description because in that way you also support my channel. Next would be a comp solution. That means creating everything from scratch. We can do that by animating a burst simply going downwards by creating a fractal noise layer animate the noise to go down and fade it in and out over time with a mask. But it needs to be in a circle bursting to each side at the same time. Hmm. Got you. And I have the perfect effect for that. So let's bring out this picture of a horizon in the Alps because this shows exactly what the effect is doing. Now let's bring out the polar coordinates and we want to have this rectangular image to be round. So we set it to rect to polar. And when we bring up the slider our straight horizon gets pushed into a sphere and we have created our own tiny world suite. So that alone could be enough content for a separate tutorial. And when we now do the same to our burst, you guessed it, we have a radial energy burst that we could tint and bring into the comp. 
but there's an even cooler method to do that. And this is with particles. And the most advanced particle generator that I know has two advantages. First, it is awesome. And second, it is free. It is called Particle Illusion and I have a download link in the video description. There's also a pro version available, which lets you open the particles directly in After Effects. So when I open it up, you see I have thousands of pre-made scenes already, from explosions to graphics and so on. And we could simply grab a pre-made burst and we are good to go. For free. But we also want to learn something, right? So let's start from scratch. I bring in a basic burst. And the way this works is the same as for each particle system. You have an emitter and that one is connected to a particle. So the emitter is the place where the particles come from and the particle, well, defines the particle. And we have a few options, but let's choose ellipse as this is closest to our ghost shape. And when playing this, it already looks cool, but let's improve. Let's keyframe the opacity so they fade out over time. Click here to add auto keyframes. And now let's make it a bit more random by playing with the turbulence. And now comes the really cool part. We can add forces to the particles and think of them as wind, for example. So click on the force with the box you define where it sits. And when I play this, you see that the wind blows into the direction of this arrow. Super cool. Oh, did I mention that this is fully 3D? with motion blur and depth of field. Now we are talking, but it gets even cooler because you can enable fluid dynamics within the force. Now it's not wind anymore, but the particles somehow behave as if they are underwater. And yes, there's no right or wrong from now on. Simply play with the settings until you have something that you like and render it out. Simply hit the render button and off you go. So I already created a few of those assets and I almost got lost in time and space with all those presets they have to offer. Unbelievable. Okay. Now we bring them in as well and maybe place them on top again with the add blending mode. And we just have to find the perfect timing. And by the way, when holding down alt, you can drag in or out your layer and therefore change the timing. This is done and we can finally pre-comp all the assets and layers and when we hit that icon over there, it actually also adopts the blending mode we had set within the comp. And why did we do that? Well, to add some glow and we do it as we always do. One with a small radius to make everything pop a bit more and a second version with a really, really, well, actually really, really huge radius and a small amount that acts as a second layer of interactive lighting. Because remember, we have already interactive lighting in the shot. And now, last but not least, the vanishing of our ghost. Therefore, let's apply an adjustment layer on top of everything and bring out the flow motion effect. Well, that name sounds familiar. Okay, here we can set our knot point to wherever we have placed our ghost and with the amount we suck in the whole image, which just gives it a super cool overall effect. So let's keyframe it sucking in and when the ghost has disappeared, we animate it back to zero. So the whole forest interacts to that, super cool. And when you want to learn a bit more about that effect, I made a whole tutorial about it. Whew. So today we were really in a hurry as we had so many topics to cover and assets to create. So if you want me to do a specific tutorial on any of these topics, let me know in the comments. And I need to take a rest right now. But before I do so, I wish you a lot of fun getting brain in After Effects.